Hey, this is Ken Finnett at Capital Advantage Tutoring, and it's my job to get you past the SIE exam and the Series 7 exam. A lot of people have a tough time with bonds and stuff like that, so we're going to talk about bonds for the Series 7 and the SIE exam, both. A lot of people are struggling with the bond triangle, the bond seesaw, and we're going to try to attempt to show you how to get problem solved using the triangle or the seesaw. I'm going to use both. I'll show you both because I prefer the triangle. But the seesaw, teeter totter, whatever you want to call it, it all works. So let's get going. Okay, so here's my triangle. So always remember the order from left to right is always coupon, current yield, yield to maturity, yield to call. Again, coupon, current, yield to maturity, yield to call. Coupon, current, yield to maturity, yield to call. It's like a fucking song. Okay, now remember that. That's left to right. So remember, yield to call is always the last, coupon's always the first. So on a discount bond, Coupons the lowest, then current, then yield to maturity, then yield to call. That's low to high. So like if the coupon is say 8% and they tell you the current yield is 8.5, well, then we know it has to be a discount if the current is higher than the coupon. Or you can just say, well, if the coupon is the lowest of any of the yields, then it has to be a discount. We'll make this up, maybe make this nine. I have no idea. And then like 9.4, okay? Just making them up, totally. Now, understand how this works. If you have a coupon of 8% and the current yield eight and a half, we know it's a discount, so you're buying it below par, discount. If you hold it to maturity, not only are you getting the eight and a half percent, you're getting a little bonus, which we'll show you in a minute when I get into this. And then if you yield to call, you're getting that bonus a little quicker or maybe even a little bonus on top of that. So that yield to call, we'll get into the whole thing. Now, on the premium side, that means a bond's trading above par. So if you have a bond at a discount, that means it's absolutely trading below par. Par is 100 or 1,000, however, however you want to quote it. It's below par. So if the bond's trading at 900, it's below par. If the bond's trading at $999, it's below par. If it's at 1,001, it's above par and it's a premium. Okay, so in a coupon bond, that's a premium. So maybe we'll make it up. We'll say like it's a 10% coupon. That means the current yield will be like 9% 9 we'll say. Then yield to maturity is gonna be even lower than that. We'll make it like 7.5 and percent. And then the yield to call is like, you know, 7%. Making up numbers, they have no bearing on anything. But if you look, you see that on a premium bond, the coupon's always the highest and yield to call is always the lowest. Again, if you see the coupon is higher than the other yields, it has to be a premium, has to be, has to be. There's no way around that. And yield to call will be the lowest. Now, sometimes they talk about how do you quote them? Always remember, you've heard the term yield to worst. I'm sure you've heard that a million times. So yield to worst is the worst of these two. So if a discount bond, you're gonna quote yield to maturity. This might also be called basis. Okay, yield to maturity and basis, same word, just like coupon means nominal, means stated, all mean the same thing. Okay, so if you see the yield to maturity, if you see a discount bond, then you have to know that you're going to quote it at yield to maturity. If you see a premium bond, then you have to know that you're quoting it at yield to call. That's what they mean by yield to worst. It means it's the lowest of the two. It's never these two and it's never these two, same thing. So it's always going to be yield to call for a premium and yield to maturity for a discount. Now, to be fair, if the bond is not callable, then obviously that's not a thing. Then it would be this. I hope that makes sense. Let's talk about how to recognize. So let's get rid of these numbers. All that shit's going out of the way. I'll retype. Put this back here for current yield. Okay, so let's say you see a bond. You see, uh, let's say they call a coupon. They'll say the coupon is 9%. And they'll say it's yielding 8%. So that, always remember, usually, always remember, usually kind of a hypocritical. If the coupon is nine and the yield is eight, that means the yield is lower than the coupon. What does that mean? That means it has to be a premium because you look, here's the coupon, here's the yield, boom, has to be a premium, 
Has to be. There's no way it couldn't be. Okay. Hope that makes sense. Now let's try the next one. Let's say, be lazy. Let's say the yield is 18%. Well, the yield is higher than the coupon. So it has to be a discount. It's that easy to figure out. Seriously, it's not harder than that. Bring it back down. Now let's say we do buy a bond at a discount. So the question is, why is the yield to maturity higher than the other ones? Well, let's say you buy a bond, say you buy a 9% bond for a discount for let's say, I'll say 9% to make it easy, for 900 bucks, I'll make it easy, okay? So now that means we bought it at a discount that we also know that all the yields are gonna be higher than the coupon. They have to be because the triangle says so, or the seesaw, which I will do after this, just so you can see and compare who cares what you use? As long as you get it right, nobody gives a shit. Now, you buy the bond for 900. It's a 9% bond. What are you earning? What are you personally earning? We know that the bond is paying 9% a par of 1,000 no matter what. So we know that this bond is paying 90 bucks. That is absolutely a true fact. It's paying 90 bucks a year, 45 bucks every six months. That's easy. The question is, what is your yield, your personal yield? Well, even if you buy the bond for 900, you're still getting 90 bucks. So what's your return? So you're going to do 90 divided by 900. That's going to give you 10%. So your, your current yield is 10%. That fits with our model that a discount means that the coupon is lower than the current yield. That totally fits with that. No, so it means you're earning 10% a year. That's awesome. That's great. That'd be a great rate now. But if you hold it to maturity, how much are you getting? Well, you only paid 900, but all bonds are born at par and they die at par. So if you buy it for 900, what are you going to get at the end? You're going to get a cool thousand. So maybe over, maybe it yields maturity in 20 years. So after 20 years, you're going to get a thousand bucks, which means you're making an extra hundred bucks. Sorry, a little break there. My fire went out. I had to stoke the stoke the logs a little bit. Okay. Now, I have a twenty-year bond, so I'm going to get. And I'm again, the math is really off. There's a lot more complicated math, but not on this exam. So don't worry about it. So you buy a bond for nine hundred. In twenty years, you get a thousand. So technically you're kind of earning five bucks a year, right? I mean, extra. So that's going to bump. So you're earning an extra $5 on top of this 10 because you buy it for nine, you get a thousand at the end. That's a hundred dollars you're getting bonus, but it's being spread out over 20 years in theory. So you're making a little, like a little extra five bucks a year. So your yield to maturity will be higher than this because you're not only are you getting the 90 bucks, which is 10%, you're getting a little bonus. So your, your yield to maturity will be higher than that. So that helps. I hope that gets that. Now, why is the yield to call even higher? Because you're going to be to the first call date, which may be in like five years. So you're going to get like, I mean, let's assume it's a par call in case it is, who knows? So let's say you're going to get $1,000, but you're getting it in five years instead of 20 years. So almost like that's like getting a little 20 bucks a year instead of five bucks a year. So that's why the yield to call is higher because you're getting you're getting that hundred bucks even quicker. So if you were to carve it out by the year, it's 20 bucks a year versus five. So you're making more. So the yield to call will always be higher on a discount because you're getting that money back sooner than the yield to maturity. Hope that helps. Let's try on the premium side. Let's say you buy a bond for you buy again, we'll make it a we'll make it a 12% bond earning 12% a year. Let's say it's trading at 1200. We like to make the numbers easy. So say the bond is trading at 1200 bucks. Well, either way, it's paying 120 bucks a year, no matter what, no matter what you pay for it, you're getting 120 bucks a year. So we'll put that here. That's your annual income, 60 bucks every six months. That's easy stuff. If you pay 1200 for it, what's your current yield? Can you guys guess? Give it a shot. Okay. It's $1,200. You're getting 120. Let's do 120 divided by 1200. Oh, look at that. Same as before, that gives us a 10% bond. So that's our current yield. We have a 12% bond with a 10% current yield. 
That's your current yield. That's personal for you. If somebody else buys a bond at 1150, they'll earn more. If they buy it at 1300, they'll earn less. No matter what, they're still getting 120, but their yield will be higher or lower depending on what they pay. Boom. Now, if you hold the bond to maturity, well, you paid 12, the issuer doesn't give a shit. He's only going to pay you a thousand. So boom. So we you're going to get one thousand dollars. Let's say again over 20 years. 20 years, you're going to lose 200 bucks because you're only getting a thousand. So we're losing money. So it's taking, money, taking money away from us. So over 20 years, 200 bucks, that's 10 bucks a year. If you carved it up, you're not gonna, but it could carve it up. So that it's reducing what you're earning 20 bucks a year for, you know, 10 bucks a year for 20 years. Okay. So that means your yield to maturity is going to be lower than the current because it has to take into account the loss that you're taking on that, that, that $200 loss at the end. But let's try the next one. Let's do a yield to call. Yield to call. It's going to be, you're going to get a thousand dollars but maybe after five years, okay? So instead of waiting 20 years to lose your 200 bucks, you can lose it in five even quicker. So what is it? 200 divided by five, whatever, that's 40 bucks. So you're almost losing 40 bucks a year. I mean, again, it, you're not losing it to the end, but if you try to carve it out, so you're losing 40 bucks a year instead of only 10. So that's why the yield to call is even lower because would you rather lose 200 bucks over 20 years? or lose it over five years. To me, I'd rather lose it over 20 years so it doesn't hurt as much. So the yield to call will always be lower than the yield to maturity if it's a premium because you're getting your money back, but you're losing some of it quicker. Hope that helps. Now, let's try this other triangle. I think this works for us. I think we can figure this out. Not so hard. So let's try the other one. Okay, so here's one of the ones I've seen. There's other ones, but this one's kind of okay. I've seen this. So it's it's the same strategy, the same thought process as the teeter as the teeter tot or the triangle. Everything it's just showing you where they are. So look at the same thing. So we have a par bond. This is a thousand. All yields are the same, right? The coupons here, the current yield is here, the yield to maturity is here, and the yield to call is there. All the same. Let me change colors. Let's play around a little bit. I use pink. Why not? Okay. So in the par bond. All yields are the same. Coupon, current, yield to maturity, yield to call. Let's make it a discount, which means below 1,000. So we start here. Here's the price below 1,000. We go up. Well, here's the coupon. It never changes. Remember that. So the current yield is going to be higher. The yield to maturity is going to be higher than that. And the yield to call is going to be even higher than that. Previously, we talk about, talked about why. Now here on the premium one, we have the price is higher. The coupon stays the same, doesn't change, but the current yield is lower. The yield to maturity is even lower than that. And the yield to call is even lower than that. Kind of works. That's the way their triangle works. I think sometimes they write it out here and there, but there's a lot of different ways to do it. I could write coupon, current, yield to maturity, yield to call, and then coupon, current, yield to maturity, yield to call, and then the same thing across. So this line means you're even. This means you're going higher. This means you're going lower. It's not that, I don't care which one you use. I like the triangle, but this works too. I definitely see the advantages of this because then you can do your teeter-totter or whatever it is. Hope that helps, guys. Um, if you like what I'm doing, hit like, subscribe, share. For the Series 7 and the SIE exam, this will help you. This is something you should write down in your dump sheet outside of your options box. Mm -hmm.